students good morning everyone so today we'll be starting up with the new chapter of biology that is the fundamental unit of life students you have already studied this uh, chapter in your class 8th but in class 9th we'll be studying this in detail now we know this thing that cell is the fundamental unit of life and it is very very important for us why because the bodies of living organisms they are made up of microscopic units called cell and it is also known as the structural and functional unit of life because whole body is made up of cell and students it is known as functional unit of life because all the functions they are regulates or control inside the cell or carried out by the cell now students we should know the discovery of cell exactly how the cell discovered so while studying a thin slice of cork robert hooke saw that the cork resembled the structure of honeycomb consisting of many little compartments robert called these cells uh, these compartments basically he called them cells which he discovered in the year 1665 Similarly students Jacob and Schwann they independently asserted that all the plants and animals they are made up of cells and they both had given cell theory which was comprises of the postulates the very first was that all organisms they are made up of cells or composed of cells second that all the metabolic reactions whether it is respiration diffusion or osmosis they all are takes place inside the cells third one is that all cells arises from pre existing cells only now what does this mean that no cell can originate spontaneously but comes into being only by division of already existing cell now student you can see here it is a complete structure of cell because we are actually studying about the cell so we should know exactly how does it looks like now students uh, will be studying each and every part of the cell in detail but let me just give you a glimpse of the diagram of exactly how does a cell looks like now you can see here that in the center it is a dense structure that is known as nucleus and inside the nucleus one small structure is embedded that is known as nucleolus you can see here this is nucleolus now uh, just look at uh, to your left side students we have mitochondria you can see this thing is mitochondria fine then we have lysosome fine the yellow structure round structure we have is lysosome which is also known as societal bag of the cell and nucleus is the brain of the cell like without brain human being is i think i would say impossible fine so similarly without this nucleus cell is nothing next we have students is ribosome these tiny structures you can see which are present all over fine inside the cell they are ribosomes which are basically the site for protein so uh, protein is basically being synthesized inside the ribosomes which are located on the rer of endoplasmic reticulum next we have is cytoplasm so it's a gel like fluid you can see inside the cell you can see this thing in pink color students it is cytoplasm fine into which all these cell organelles are embedded now coming on to the right hand side you can see the nucleus is being surrounded by a membrane that is the nuclear membrane similarly students a nucleus we have already done fine so dna occurs inside the nucleus within the strands of chromatin material that we'll be studying in uh, later on next we have is golgi apparatus you can see here students this thing is golgi apparatus fine the purple colored structure you can see then we have cell membrane centriole and endoplasmic reticulum so this um, is a complete structure of a cell Now students, cell जो होता है वो basically different shapes or sizes में available होता है fine? So we have different kinds of uh, shapes of cells and sizes of cells. Like here in this picture, you can see that we have sperm cell, round in shape. Fine. We have blood cell, discoidal in shape. Then we have fat cell, oval in shape. 
Similarly, we have some cells which are branched in nature. For example, we have nerve cell. Fine. So all these are different kinds of cells which are present in living organisms. Now students, depending upon the number of cells, we have two different kinds of organisms. First one is unicellular organism and second one we have is multicellular organisms. Now students, some organisms, they are constituted by a single cell and these are called unicellular. For example, we have amoeba, paramecium, yeast, etc. And here uni means single. It means it consists of only one cell in which only this single cell will be performing each and every function of the cell. So we can say that there is no division of labor as the single cell perform all the activities. And student, the lifespan of an individual is short in case of unicellular organisms. Similarly, talking about multicellular organism, there are some organisms which are constituted basically of many cells. Many cells means the body, basically the organism uh, is consists of number of cells. Fine. Uh, you can see the example, we human being. Fine. So here what exactly happens? That a single cell performs one or few activities of the organism. So ek hi cell sare functions jo hai wo perform karta hai. Fine. Matlab, sorry, ek hi jo uh, alag alag cells hai wo different functions perform kar rahe hai. But unicellular ki case mein kya tha? That only single cell was performing the all the functions. So all the functions, whether it is anything, excretion, respiration, each and every function was being performed by the single cell. But talking about multicellular organism, here a single cell perform one activity only. So fine. So we are like for example in talking about human body, our respiration is done by some other organ. Fine. For excretion, we have different organ. For reproduction, we have different organ. Fine. So, these are the uh, differences between the unicellular and multicellular organism. Now, student, you can see here, it is a structure of amoeba. Fine. Which is a unicellular organism. And the intake of the amoeba basically is done by the process endocytosis. So, here exactly how does this amoeba engulfs the food? That uh, the finger-like structure you can see. So these finger-like projections uh, which are known as pseudopodia, with the help of these pseudopodia, amoeba engulfs the food. And this process is also known as endocytosis. So endo means taking in, fine, the cell eating process. So here exactly what happens, endocytosis is the ingestion of material by the cell. Fine. So, we are ingesting something. The cell is ingesting something. And that is done through the plasma membrane. Fine. Which is present in case of animal cell. The outer covering in case of animal cell is of plasma membrane. So, uh, similarly we have a term here that is phagocytosis. That means cell eating. So, it literally means cell eating. Fine. The eating of cell is said to be phagocytosis. Similarly, students, for your knowledge, let me just make you aware with one more term. That is the exocytosis. Fine. Exo means, like you can say, endo means in. And exo means out. Fine. So here, uh, exocytosis, basically, what does it mean? Removal of undigested residue of substance. Fine. So the removal of substance with uh, through the plasma membrane is said to be exocytosis. So this was all about this thing. Now students, you can see here that cell consists of different kinds of organelles. Fine. That we have already done. But uh, we'll be studying their structure and functions in detail. You can see the first one is nucleus. Then we have uh, cytoplasm. Then we have mitochondria, lysosome, rhizo uh, ribosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, plastids, cell wall, Golgi apparatus, peroxisomes and centrosomes. Now students, this is a complete structure of plant cell and animal cell. Cell ka structure we have already done students. But we should know some of the minor differences between the plant cell and animal cell. So you can see here, the talking about plant cell, you can see the outer covering is cell wall. Fine, you can see here on your right hand side students, the green colored structure is plant cell. You can see the cell wall. 
and you can see inside the cell wall there is a membrane that is known as cell membrane rest each and everything is same that we have already discussed in the structure of cell the only difference between the plant cell and animal cell although there are many differences but the major we can see you can see the green colored like structure fine in circular portion the green colored like structure fine so these are the i am moving my cursor students you can see the green colored like structure with yellow stripes these are the chloroplast which are not seen in case of animal cell to animal cell mein kya cheez absent rehta hai dear the chloroplast fine they are not present inside the animal cell why because we can uh, we are basically dependent upon the plants only fine we don't need to prepare our own food and we don't prepare but talking about plant cell they have to prepare their own food with the help of sunlight chlorophyll fine and this process is said to be photosynthesis you have already done uh, this thing in your previous classes now students um, we should know that what is uh, basically the difference between the plant cell and animal cell the first difference i think it's already clear to you that in case of uh, animal cell we have a plasma membrane talking about plant cell we have cell wall fine and chloroplast are present in case of plant cell but chloroplast are absent in case of animal cell similarly students you can see in plant cell we have a vacuole but that is larger in size and talking about animal cell can you see here students in plant cell a blue colored structure sky blue it is vacuole fine ye sara vacuole hai and you can see iska size thoda bada hai if i if i'll take in like if i'll compare it with animal cell you can check it out that the size of this vacuole is comparatively larger than the animal cell fine and students animal cells have centrosomes and centrioles fine so iske jo animal cell hai isme kya present rahega these structures we have centrioles fine these are the centrioles which basically helps in the process of cell division so you can see the purple like structure centriole they are absent in case of plant cell and similarly students uh, the size of the animal cell is small fine and jo plant cell ka size hota hai that is larger fine in animal cell cell wall is absent cell wall absent rehta hai fine sorry animal cell mein cell wall absent rehta hai students this is the structure of animal cell i have already explained you this thing that in case of animal cell there is no cell wall but there is an outer covering that is said to be plasma membrane fine but talking about plant cell we have the cell wall fine so this was all about uh, the differences between plant cell and animal cell now students all the living organisms present on earth they can be classified into two different types first one we have is non cellular organism and second is cellular organism now students talking about non cellular organism they do not contain any cell in their body organization for example we have virus they lack any membrane in them they do not have any membrane fine but talking about uh, the cellular orga uh, organisms we have prokaryotic and eukaryotic we are having two different categories fine so the first one is prokaryotic students um you can just jot it down all the important points fine the first one is that the size of the cell is generally small fine to cell jo hai wo prokaryotic ka kaisa rehta hai small um you can uh, write down these points students second one we have is that it has well defined nucleus fine well defined nucleus kya rehta hai present nahi hota in case of prokaryotic second one we have is it is simple in structure so the structure is simple in case of prokaryotes then it contains single chromosome fine it do not have many chromosome it consists of only one chromosome or a single chromosome next is students that nucleus is absent in case of prokaryotes fine here pro means primitive and karyon mean nucleus so primitive kind of nucleus but well defined nucleus they are not present next we have is eukaryotic it is almost opposite uh, as that of prokaryotic so it has well defined nucleus fine it is complex in nature it contain or consist of more than one chromosomes and here nucleus is also present 
and their size are generally large in comparison to prokaryotes. I hope this thing is clear to each one of you. Now students, we have already done this thing uh, that we uh, cells are basically uh, found in various shapes such as we have round shapes, spherical shapes, oval shape, spindle shapes and branch shapes. Fine. Now next we will be studying about the structure of cell. Fine. So ma mainly we are having three major functional region of the cell. First one we have is cell membrane that is also known as plasma membrane or cell wall in case of plant cell. I am again repeating this thing students that in case of animal cell the outermost covering is known as plasma membrane and in case of plant it is known as cell wall. Fine. Next uh, second one we have is the nucleus and the last part or the major functional region of the cell is the cytoplasm. So, we will be discussing about the plasma membrane or cell membrane later on because it uh, will be carried, uh, carrying out some activities also. Uh, we will be discussing about the second part that is the nucleus. Fine, it is very important organelle of the cell. Now, why it is so important? Because it regulates all the activities of the cell. Next one is students nucleolus. Fine. So nucle uh, basically this nucleolus is embedded inside the nucleus only and it is a part of nucleus. It is known as factory of ribosomes. Now students ribosomes are the tiny structures and with the help of these ribosomes protein can be synthesized and we all know this thing that our body requires the protein. Fine. So this protein in our body can be synthesized. Inside the nucleolus, fine. That is why it is known as the factory of ribosomes. Now students will be discussing about uh, the structure of nucleus in detail. Fine, you can see here that this is a complete structure of nucleus, fine. You can see this is nucleolus inside the nucleus, fine. This is nuclear envelope, this is nuclear envelope and you can see in between we have some pores that are known as nuclear pores fine you can see these are the pores known as nuclear pores then students you can see the thread like structure inside the nucleus that is known as chromatin fine and later on when the cell starts divide when the basically this uh, these chromatin can be seen in undividing cell fine so, agar cell divide hona start hota hai, to us time pe they basically condensed and take a structure of chromosomes. Fine, that we'll be studying right now. And this thing you can see, fine, this is nucleoplasm. So, inside the nucleoplasm, we have the chromatin material. Now, student, nucleus is a large centrally located spherical component. You can see here, fine, it is present in the center of the cell. But only in case of uh, animal cell. In case of plant cell, it is in periphery. Why? Because the size of the vacuole in case of plant cell is bigger. Fine. In comparison to the animal cell. Now, student, it is bounded by two nuclear membrane. You can see it is bounded by two nuclear membrane. And both the membrane, they basically form a structure that is known as nuclear envelope. Fine. So, this is the nuclear envelope. Then student nuclear envelope separates the nucleus from the cytoplasm. Fine. This uh, nuclear envelope is basically uh, what is the main function of this nuclear envelope? It separates the nucleus. Fine. This is a complete structure of nucleus. So it separates the nucleus from the cytoplasm. Okay. This structure is here. This one is cytoplasm. Here you cannot see it because we are uh, more focusing upon the nucleus only. And uh, the nuclear envelope, they contain many pores. You can see here, they contain number of pores. And these pores are said to be nuclear pores. Fine. And they encloses the liquid substance. Now, what is that liquid substance? You can see here, inside which the chromatin can be seen. So, this is the nucleoplasm. Fine, dear. Now, what is the function of this nuclear pore? That we have already uh, seen. Nuclear pore. These are the nuclear pores. Fine. So what are the functions of these nuclear pores? They allow the transfer of material between the nucleoplasm and cytoplasm. So, bacho, ye jo structure here, you can see this one. This one. 
This is the cytoplasm. See, you can imagine this thing is a cytoplasm and lot of organelles like mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, they are being embedded here. Fine. And this is nucleoplasm. Okay. So, nucleopore ka jo main function hai, that is to allow the transfer of material between the nucleoplasm, between the nucleoplasm and cytoplasm. Fine. Now, within nucleoplasm, there are two types. Uh, you can see, uh, you will be seeing the two different kinds of structure. Fine, the, uh, where two things are embedded basically, I would say. The first one is nucleolus. You can see students inside the nucleoplasm. This is, this is nucleoplasm, a complete structure of nucleoplasm. And it is being embedded with the help of two structures. You can see the first one is nucleolus and second we have is chromatin material. Fine. Now the, the nucleus, nucleolus may be one or more in number. Fine. And it is not bounded by any membrane. Plus, it is rich in protein and it acts as the site for ribosome synthesis. So, basically, that is why it is known as the factory of protein. Fine, because the protein is being synthesized here. Okay. Uh, now, the chromatin material, you can see the chromatin material, students. It is a thin thread-like structure and it is composed of genetic substance that is DNA and protein. So, basically, what did, uh, kya is composed of DNA, that is deoxyribonucleic acid which stores all the informations that are necessary for the cell to function. Now, what are those functions which a cell has to perform and DNA has to store? For example, we need to grow, fine. Uh, we need to reproduce for the cells to the next generation. Distinct segment of DNA, they are called as functional genes. So, the functional segment of DNA ka, that is said to be genes. And the chromatin material is condensed into two or more thick ribbon-like structure that is known as chromosome. And it only takes place during the division of cell. So when the cell is dividing, it is only then, it, it will be looking like this. Fine, you can see here the purple colored structure chromosome. And it contains hereditary information in the form of genes. Fine, I hope this thing is clear students. Next we have is cell wall fine cell wall it is a rigid outer covering outside plasma membrane and that is called the cell wall it is basically in the case of plant cell fine and it is found mainly in fungi bacteria and it is made up of cellulose there are some various functions of the cell wall students that it is non-living fine it is freely permeable. So, it is not selectively permeable as that in case of plasma membrane that we will be studying later on. It is freely permeable. It means it is not selective in nature. It can allow any material to pass through. Next is that it determines the shape of a plant and it is made up of cellulose and pectin. Fine. So, this was all about today's topic students.